Hello everybody and welcome back to Chris Bosch Props. My name is Chris and today I am going to do a video showing you guys how to cast a Ghostbusters Proton Pack shell. Now you might say, Chris, why are you going to cast one? Why don't you just 3D print one? That's so much easier. Well guys, 3D printing is not accurate to what was used and what the production team did in the original 1984 Ghostbusters movie. To be movie accurate, you have to make a silicone mold and cast the proton pack shell in resin backed with fiberglass mat or strand. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys how to cast a movie accurate Ghostbusters proton pack shell. So let's get to it. So of course the first thing we need for a casting is a mold. This is a silicone mold of my master. What this does is provide me a negative so that I can cast a positive. For supplies, we are going to need a couple cups, at least for the gel coat, the initial gel coat, some mold release, some sticks to mix, some gloves, and some brushes. Now this is just for the first step of the process and the first step because I failed to mention is putting our gel coat down. And what a gel coat is, is a resin coat that picks up all the details. It's basically the detail coat. So we are going to lay our detail coat with some resin. And then after that, we are going to back it with fiberglass resin. Now fiberglass resin is the reinforcement layer of the shell and really gives it that added strength that it needs so that it is not so brittle just being the resin alone. And now we'll get right into it and I'll show you exactly the steps of the process of how I do it. The very, very first step I do before I do anything is I add in some ease release. This is man's ease release 200. And all I do is just spray a light coat into the mold in the crevices and the corners. And what that does is that just helps when the casting is finished, when I get to demolding, that it demolds easy. The silicone pulls off of the casting way easier than if I were to not use ease release. And what this does is also protects your silicone mold so that it doesn't get stuck, it doesn't rip or tear getting hung up on parts of the casting, like these sharp edges and stuff like that. So that's the first step. Now we're gonna get our resin and mix it. So now we have our resin here. These are gallon kits, which equal about two gallons when you get a gallon kit. And this is a one-one ratio resin. We are gonna mix it in equal parts in these cups. I'll show you how I do it real quick. Now this is pretty cool. It has these little pour spouts here that you can get at Lowe's or Amazon or whatever. We're just gonna pour this carefully into our cups. Careful guys, resin is expensive. So you don't wanna waste this by dropping it. Pour about, uh, I think that's probably good for our first coat. So let's see, I'm gonna sideways look at that. It looks like we're a little bit too much. Just a hair too much. But again, it's very forgiving. What this would do if we were to mix this, it would just make the color a lot lighter, but it would still cure and be just as strong. But we want our color to be kind of like a medium dark gray. We're gonna get our brush, okay? And when you get your brush, these are just Harbor Freight. I think they're a pack of, let me see here. This is what I use to brush my gel coats and my fiberglass are these two inch chip brushes from Harbor Freight. They're just disposable throwaway. Uh, sometimes you can get away with using one brush on a couple cups of fiberglass resin, but for the gel coat, you're really just gonna, each, each set that you're gonna do, we're just gonna go through a brush each time and dispose of it and throw it away. So now that you have your brush, make sure you pull all the loose bristles out because if you don't, those loose bristles will get stuck in your gel coat, your resin coat. So you don't want that. Sometimes one will slip through and you can pick it out, but for starters, that's how we're gonna do it. So now we are going to mix our cups of resin. 
I pour the white part into the dark part. Now it's really hot today in Texas, so we don't have a whole lot of work time. Just mix it really, really, really good. Make sure you get your edges and everything like that. Okay guys, so now we're gonna pour it into our mold. Now what I like to do is to do the upper half of the shell first with my first cut. So I'm not worried about this bottom half yet. We'll do that on our next cup. But I just want to pour it in there, make sure it gets really good. I'm kind of mixing as it comes out because you'll get a little bit of marbling in there like that. But we'll fix all that once we get our brush and start brushing everything in. Remember, resin is money and we don't want to waste. So make sure you get as much as you can. Now some of the cup I leave and I come back and I get that and I fill in some of the spots. All right guys, we got our brush. Now let's just start brushing. And building up the edges. That is very important because it likes to run down and it'll leave the edges thin and then leave the flat parts, the bottom part, gravity pulls it all down and it'll make those strong. So we're gonna cover all of our areas, work up the edges and you keep pushing it up the edges, keep pushing it up the edges. We keep doing that until this starts to cure. I do make a little bit of flash, a flash edging here. Everything up, everything up. Make a little bit of a flash edge. And it's easy to miss edges, so just constantly keep checking. Make sure you don't see too much pink. Working it, build your edge up. I'm using a cup to balance out my mold. You can tell the viscosity starts getting thicker as it cures, and that's a good thing. We want it to get thicker because we want to build these edges up. When it gets thick, it starts to stick. Just keep doing it, keep working it. Because some of these are mounting points. That's a mounting point. A mounting point is over here, and we want to make sure that the person that buys this shell has a sturdy and strong shell so that they can mount their equipment on it. And then when we get to the fiberglass stage, I, I double up on those mounting points just to make sure, you know, that's the most important parts of the shell. So yeah, I hope you can see that, that I keep building up the edges. Keep building them up, keep building them up. And eventually it just gets to the point where you cannot build it up anymore. And you just gotta live with it. And then you can come back in and add more resin if needed. And what this resin coat is doing is it's picking up all the detail that is in the silicone mold. And then I like to go in kind of move the bristles around on the ribs so that we don't get too many air bubbles. Really, really push that resin into the ribs. So just keep building up the edges. Keep building up the edges. We'll see, I'll keep building the edges up. It's starting to dry. And then I'll kind of push my brush off like that. And that's good. It'll start to kind of run and self-level itself. Now it's kind of hard to see in here with the lighting. But I can keep building it up. Keep building it up. 
let it run. Same thing here with the power cell. Build it up. And whatever I miss, or if I don't thicken up an area real well, I always just come back and get it on another cup. Keep building the wall up. Keep building it up. Yeah, I'm about done. It's starting, my brush is starting to kind of stick, as you can see. And then it's gonna start self-leveling itself out. And that's how I do it for the first part of the casting. I do the first half and then now once this kind of dries and it's not going to pull on my brush anymore I'm going to do this second part down here. Okay guys so it's starting to kind of set up now when you're done with this first part you kind of want to let it sit until your finger doesn't really stick to it. See I'm still making an indentation. This is going to get hard to the point where it no longer makes the indentation. You're kind of waiting for it to get a little bit harder because when you put your next coat on and you get some excess that runs down, you don't want your brush pulling on this if it's still soft. So I wait until the top part gets a little bit hard and then I start my second part. All right guys, so we're gonna pour in our second coat now. Our top half is uh, definitely hard enough. You can kind of see how I, I drop it all in, mixing as I'm pouring. As soon as we get all our material in there, we're going to start brushing. And sometimes you'll see the marbling. You can take your stick in there if you need to, but usually I finish it off with a brush and then correct all that with the brush. All right, we got our brush here. Start pulling our material. Getting all the pink. You can see it here. where we're at guys we're gonna let this level itself out a little bit more but we have now covered all of our shell the problem is we're still gonna have some thin points in here and a lot of the parts that like to get thin thin walls are your gun mount your power cell the upper area of the shell and the bottom of the sink gen they're they're pretty stubborn so we're going to come back and put another coat of resin uh, not as much as we use we're going to use one cup pretty much for the rest of the thickening of those major parts of the shell okay guys we are on our third cup now this cup is no longer for detail this is for getting the spots that we either missed or the spots we were not able to thick up enough. And we are going to thicken those walls and areas that we need to on this cup. That's what primarily this is for. We are done with our gel coat. Let's move on now to fiberglassing. We are at the part of fiberglassing which is the worst part of casting a shell. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm not gonna pull any punches. Fiberglassing sucks, but it is a must to reinforce and strengthen our casting. Okay guys, so we have our cup. We don't have a one-one ratio on this. We just use what's in the gallon container. And we pour our fiberglass resin in. I like to get close to about eh, about three quarters of the cup is good enough for the first section. And we have our hardener here. So this comes with the 3M fiberglass resin and this is what activates it and hardens the resin that we have here in our cup. 
Now I do not go off the ratio recommended. I always have done it by drops and it's always worked for me, but it will vary depending on your temperature. Right now, the sweet spot is about 50 drops. It's roughly 80 to 85 degrees today. And I do 50 drops. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Now, I probably missed a few drops there, but that's okay. It's just roughly 50 drops. We are gonna mix our resin. I am using fiberglass chop strand, 1.5 ounces. I buy it in bulk, and then I cut it up in squares, and then you kinda just work it with your hands, and you fold it and put it where you need to. I'll show you that part next, but we have to mix this, and we don't have a whole lot of work time, so. Let's go ahead and mix it up. Make sure you mix it really, really good. Get all your walls and everything. All right, guys, make sure you have a respirator on. I'm gonna be a little bit muffled for the rest of the video, so forgive me, but the fumes of fiberglass resin are way, 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 way too strong to not have a respirator on. It's extremely toxic, so make sure you have a mask on. I'm gonna keep mixing. Mixing, 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 making sure I got everything. Now I'm gonna do a tack coat. Now a tack coat is to help the fiberglass stick to the resin. Then I will place mat and then I will start dabbing with more fiberglass resin to make sure it sticks. You can see me kind of loosening it up with my hands. That just makes the fiberglass a little bit more flexible for the areas that I need it to be flexible in so it can wrap around the corners that are in here. Right now all I'm doing is just placing it and I kind of overlay it over it's messy guys, it sucks, but you gotta do it. Just place that in there for now. Now I'm doing the same thing, I'm working on the top half section. I'm not worried about this bottom section, I'm just working on this top section here. I don't have enough time to, to do the whole shell. So you have to make sure you work a little bit quickly because your resin is going to be hardening up in your cup. 
you don't have to be like Superman fast, but you do kind of want to try to work quickly. And remember what I said, resin is money. <laughs> it's just, it's not cheap anymore. It used to be cheaper, but now it's just, it's ridiculously expensive. It's like double the price of what it used to be. Now we're going to use the remainder of our resin and we're going to start dabbing all of this in, forming it and shaping it to the contours and dabbing it, dabbing it, dabbing it like so. We'll probably have to get another cup of resin, but that's fine. That's just a part of the process. Hope you guys can see it's ugly and messy at first unfortunately it's just kind of the nature of the beast in doing this but as that fiberglass starts soaking up the resin it starts allowing you to manipulate it to get it to stick to the areas that you need it to gonna need some more resin but that's okay So you can start to see just how good everything really starts to look. It's very wet, it's still curing right now. But if you see an air bubble, you'll get air bubbles a lot in these little areas here. You just come and dab them out, you're good to go. Now I'm gonna start working on this bottom half now.
Alrighty guys, so we are pretty much done fiberglassing. I went through and made sure I doubled up on all the mounting points and reinforced those so when the customer receives this, they are pretty much ready to go and start working. I am just going through right now and dabbing out some of the air bubbles that are in here. Going through, just kind of lightly, lightly dabbing everything out. You're gonna get some fiberglass strands that like to pop up on the edges, but I'm not overly concerned about those because before I ship this to the customer, I come in and sand everything inside, make sure it's nice and smooth for them. So when they get to mounting their aluminum or resin parts, they're not getting stabbed to death and bleeding everywhere. So yeah, that is pretty much it. We're gonna let this sit and cure for a few hours and then I'm gonna come back and demold it with you guys and we'll get to see what it looks like together and how good it came out. The first step in demolding is we're gonna turn this around. And then we're gonna unscrew our bolts. It usually comes off pretty easy. It's not too bad. There we go. Or wherever you deem necessary. There's our second part. Demolding can be quite the process, but since we used the ease release, it's actually not too bad. I usually start at the bottom and I just peel it back. I roll it over like so. I'll hold that one and I start kind of working the edges and the middle section here because this is where it likes to get stuck at the most is right here around the EDA. Just kind of work it, pull up the gun mount area. Now I hold this up because I don't want it crashing down and doing any kind of damage to the inside of the mold. So I do kind of hold this up. Then I kind of roll that back. And now I just go ahead and I start lifting. where it likes to get stuck the most is in the middle. And voila, there we go guys, we got our mold off. I'm just gonna go set it to the side. And that guys is how you cast a proton pack shell. There we go. Now all we got to do is just trim all the flashing, make it look nice and pretty, fill in a couple air bubbles, but overall it came out incredible guys. I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Please leave a comment below. Please give me a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. And yeah guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. We're on to the next one.